Hi, it's Louise Spiral Brick Bright Insight. I'm here to talk about the new moon, which has come around super quick this month. Um, it's happening on either the 7th or the 8th of May, depending where you are. For us in the UK, it will be the early hours of the 8th. And the sun and the moon will be at 18 degrees, two minutes of Taurus. Now, the new moon is always the point where the sun and the moon join together. It is the darkest point in the lunation, in the lunar calendar, because um, we can't actually see the moon. So this is very much about having faith and trusting that what you are sort of setting the intention to invite in, to create, to manifest is actually happening, even though we can't actually see the results until possibly further on in the lunar calendar as we get towards the full moon. So it's very much a time when we are planting the seed and we can't necessarily see the growth or the shoots quite yet. But it is about dreaming something into being. And the energy of Taurus is incredibly potent when it comes to manifesting, to creating, because Taurus is the master builder. So Taurus is very much um, about our physical experience. It's the second sign of the zodiac, fixed earth sign and Taurus is ruled by Venus so very much linked to beauty, to aesthetics, to um, luxury, to sensuality and also rules our resources and what we need to feel safe and comfortable and secure in our physical world. Taurus is very much about simplicity. So, you know, we don't sort of need um, glitz and glamour when we're working with Taurus. It is about stripping everything back to the bare essentials, but making sure that those bare essentials are very solid, very real um, and very um, helpful and useful for us and in order to keep us very safe and secure in our world. Now, um, Taurus is very grounded, obviously being an earth sign. This energy is practical. It is very dedicated, very resilient, very tenacious, which feels like we need a lot of that energy at the moment to kind of keep us going through these times. It's very slow and very steady, but very thorough. So Taurus is very much about hard work and sort of really acknowledging that, you know, nothing worth um, doing or nothing worth having is necessarily going to come quickly. It can take time, but when it does, the results will be permanent and lasting and very, um, very real and very tangible. So, you know, this is really um, a very sort of hopeful sort of energy to be working with at this time because we are so aware that we are creating the new earth, but there is also... Um, a lot of faith and trust having to sort of take place at the moment because we can't necessarily see the results yet. But because Taurus is all about our senses and how we experience life through our senses, it feels very much to me that this is key at this time because we may not be able to see um, the results of the new world and what is coming through. But I would say, certainly speaking from experience, that we can feel them, that the energy feels very different. And, you know, I did a video about um, the energies just a couple of days ago, which a lot of you really resonated with. And, you know, I had lots of comments to say people were feeling the same thing. It's very hard to put a finger on it or to put it into words, but something has definitely shifted and our world, our experience just feels very different. And I think as we move towards this new moon, this um, the sort of the reality and the experience of that is getting even more pronounced. So just going back to Taurus, obviously it's the builder and um, it also rules value and what matters. So our physical matter, but also what we consider to be worth worthy or of value in our world. Um, v Venus is very much linked to gifts and talents. So there's a real focus coming through here 
on possibly new gifts coming online. Again, you know, through the senses, so through the clairs potentially, but feeling much more in tune with ourselves, with our surroundings, with our bodies and with the physical earth as well. But there is also a real sort of reminder with this Taurus new moon and also with so much other Taurus energy in the chart that um, being physical at this time and really focusing in and tuning into our physicality is absolutely crucial because that is the way that we bring the higher energies through in through our physical vessels and that is how we make the shift on this planet just through being here. So there are some really interesting sort of themes that we're working with with this new moon but it is very much about exploring who we are through our physical reality and our senses in particular also um realizing how powerful we are and how um you know we have this ability to create our reality and we're starting to really explore what that means at a much deeper level especially with this new moon energy coming through it's also really encouraging us to um, identify with and pinpoint what our gifts and talents are and how we can use them and how we're actually starting to feel safe enough to do that. You know, a lot of us have sort of hidden ourselves away and maybe um, not been completely upfront, um, you know, about what we can do. But this is a time where, because Taurus is such a s safe and earthy and grounding energy it's giving us that beautiful stable platform to be able to actually start to explore what our gifts are and how we might be able to share them and put them to good use in this world and um, it's very much leading us to um, focus in on the heart the heart center um, and to really act from and live from the heart so bringing us much more into that heart based consciousness which is very much aligned with the five D um, reality that we're shifting into and it is about feeling safe to be true to be who we are you know we are in this process now of creating something new I think we can all start well certainly there's an awareness of it we can feel that something's happening even if we don't necessarily see it reflected back in perhaps you know what we're seeing on the news for example but I think you know we can all feel that there is a massive shift taking place and you know acknowledging that it is taking time we need to have patience which is a very Taurian attribute we are going very slowly very steadily but it will be worth it in the end so we're also looking when we've got any new or full moon, we're looking at what the planets are doing in the rest of the chart to sort of set the scene, give us a broader picture. And we've got um, Saturn is in a sextile to the sun and the moon. So Saturn being in Pisces, this is very much about maturity, about um, spiritual mastery, about acknowledging that, you know, we have to recognise that um, this whole sort of new world does not get created just by being physical that we have to really lean on our spiritual selves and our higher selves and the gifts that we are bringing through and from other dimensions to really support us in this process um, and that you know as we sort of shift into this new way of being and being in, connect, in having the stronger connection to our higher selves and the more divine part of ourselves is part of being in this 5d um, realm and experience and reality so again Saturn is just sort of lending that kudos um, and reminding us that it is so important for us to do that and um, there's also a real sense because of the Pisces energy and um, a focus on unity consciousness again which obviously keeps coming up compassion we should feel much more compassionate for each other for ourselves and for our planet um, as we connect more to the heart consciousness. But we also might have to um, acknowledge that because Pisces is the final sign in the zodiac, that there is something that perhaps we need to let go of if we are going to make this leap and move into um, this different way of being. So um, just to bear that in mind, and of course, Neptune is at the 29, the anoretic degree of Pisces at this time as well. So, that, you know, the final 
degree point of the zodiac, all about endings, very karmic, but also dissolving into the void, which again is very Piscean, Piscean. So having to let go of perhaps what we have been used to, what we've relied on, what we've always known, and it is very much about a leap of faith. Now, we have obviously strong Taurus energy because the Sun, the Moon, Venus, Jupiter and Uranus are all in Taurus. This is really giving us some very solid sort of backdrop support as well as we move through these times and sort of giving us this real inner strength which, which we really need to rely on as we are moving through such times of change. And also, um, you know, with the strong Neptune in Pisces energy, it can feel a lot of the time as if, you know, it's very um, sort of the very fluid. It's quite hard to kind of almost get a grip on reality right now. And I think with the Taurus backdrop that is helping us, although it is still quite difficult to kind of sometimes ground or, you know, even sort of have even know who you are, if that makes sense. But that's how I've been feeling. Um, we have Chiron will be conjunct Mercury in Aries. So, you know, this is the third time this um, aspect has happened because Mercury went retrograde um, back through Aries, but is now in direct motion. So there is new information coming forward that Mercury is here to bring about the wound and about our identity and about who we are. We are very much sort of transmuting and letting go of old ideas about who we are, old beliefs, old understandings as something new is coming in to take its place. So very healing, but through information and understanding at this time. We've got Sedna at zero degrees of Gemini, we have Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces. You know, these are both um, aspects that I've talked about in other videos, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Um, but <clears throat> just to look at the fixed stars and the galactic alignments because there are some really beautiful ones here. So Venus is the ruling planet of this lunation and she is conjunct Shadir or Skadir in Cassiopeia. Now, Cassiopeia is a very angelic constellation. So here we have, um, and this is about gifts because Venus is all about gifts and talents. Um, and obviously in Taurus about the resources that we have available. So this is really boosting our psychic abilities, our telepathic abilities. Um, it's helping us to start to use our minds in very advanced ways, perhaps ways that we've not worked with or in, encountered before. Um, there's a really strong sense of angelic, archangelic energy coming through, lots of wisdom, lots of unconditional love and compassion for what we are going through. And there's also very much a focus here on the um, power of water and its ability to heal and how sacred and divine it is. Now, Mercury and Chiron are both opposing Arcturus. So Arcturus is um, a really beautiful star and it's one that we associate with master healers. Um, you know, this is very much about having access to an information and understanding about healing that is required to heal our wound of the identity of the self. Um, now the Arcturian, Arcturians um, are very much linked to um, transition because they are effectively like cosmic midwives. They support souls to move in and out of this earthly plane. So they are always around at times of great transition, which is very comforting because obviously that's what we're going through at this time. But there's also here a really strong and perhaps new awareness of frequency and energy and how important it is to help us heal and to help us shift. So they are very much um, lending their sort of wisdom and their understanding and their higher consciousness to us at this time. You know, and that can also be coming through in the form of light codes and um, very much frequency based, but also light language may be something that, you know, if you've not worked with before, that might be coming online at this time. So, you know, be open to um, anything is what I would say with that. And we also have, um, because 
and there's another fixed star that shares the same degree as Arcturus, which is Speaker or Spiker. And, you know, this is a really beautiful star and it really lends itself to um, sort of abilities, psychic abilities, telepathic abilities. Um, it, it also is helping or supporting us to see through the wound of separation and to understand that there is no separation that actually that is an illusion that we have you know very readily been very invested in for you know eons of time that this is a time when we're starting to realize that we're not separate at all that we are all connected and that we all are are all part of source energy so this star is very good at holding space it's very loving it kind of really brings us back into a sense of being rather than doing so beautiful and um, space holding energy there's a very um sort of strong focus on lack of judgment so no judgment is allowed when the star is activated and you know it's just very beautiful energy to be working with us as we heal the wound of our identity and of the self and we start to really um you know, bring in new information that is going to help us to do that. Now, I've talked in the Sedna video that I did about how she is activating the Pleiades stars, of course, the Pleiades being the master healers as well, very much about bringing us back into our heart space, our heart center, that heart based consciousness, much higher spiritual wisdom coming through from the Pleiadians and you know spiritual enlightenment so again with saturn in pisces you know with the arcturian energies with the pleiadian energies there's some really really high frequency support here at the time of this new moon and um, we have venus is in an opposition to crux or acrux in the crux constellation this is the southern cross Again, themes of spiritual enlightenment coming forward um, helping us to kind of bring that um, connection with spirit down into the physical. So it unites spirit and matter. It kind of blends those two together. And again, in an acknowledgement that both are vital if we are to move forward and to evolve, we have to learn to be able to work with both, which of course as well, is very much enhanced with the number eight in the eight universal year that we're working with. Obviously, as above, so below comes to mind. Um, with a crux, there is also the theme of sacrifice and the recognition and acknowledgement that things are quite hard and quite tough and that there are sacrifices to be made, and um, but that there is always... Um, sort of a benefit to the pain and suffering and that suffering and hardship is actually the path to growth that is part of the human experience. Nothing is necessarily easy, but it is always worthwhile and it helps us to kind of have a greater understanding of that um, as a sort of higher level of consciousness. Now, Mars in Aries is opposing the super galactic center. So, you know, again, this is one of the very powerful cosmic points. It is about um, giving us the motivation and the passion to stretch beyond what we have known and to really um, sort of consider, you know, what is out there beyond our sort of everyday mundane lives, if you will. But it is pushing us to want to know more, to want to experience more, to want to understand more. You know, this is all consuming black hole energy. There's a huge gravitational pull with this energy. It is also transmuting lower frequencies and vibrations that are just no longer sort of um, any use or any service to us. There's also a sense with the supergalactic center that resistance is completely futile. So that it is very much about we have to surrender. We have to go with the flow we have to allow this um all the t all the changes that are taking place because the gravity is so strong and it's kind of a case of it's going to happen regardless of what we either do or don't do so again you know that's that real sort of very fated um element to this um new moon and the energy as well which um you know really is very beautiful to sort of um just kind of acknowledge that we are that it's happening for us and with us and um it can't not <laughs> um we also have jupiter conjunct algol now this is really interesting this star is going to be very activated over the next 
few weeks. And this star is very much bringing a focus in on the dark and the light and the polarity and the fact that the shadow is very much part of the light, that the two light and dark are just the different opposing expressions of the same source energy. But it is very much about encouraging us to look at fear and power straight in the eye and not to be intimidated by it. There's also a real strong energy here of shedding layers, of letting go, and of knowing at a very deep core level what needs to be cut off or removed in order that we can grow and move forward. So, you know, I will talk about Algon in more detail, and um, but this, you know, is really starting to come online now and is very much part of this new moon and the fact that, you know, we are having to let go of the old in order to move into this new energy. Now, Saturn is still conjunct anchor in the Phoenix constellation, which I've talked about already. But again, you know, themes of regeneration, rebirth, purification, transmutation, alchemy um, and having hope. And also reminding us that, you know, if tears are shed, then they are very healing because that is the power of the Phoenix tears. And we also have Arcanar in the Eridanus constellation bringing a connection to the elven energy here very magical very mystical energy but also um you know reminding us that we are on a journey and um, this is this is the constellation of the river and that we have to flow that there will be twists and turns and bends and perhaps unexpected events on, on the course of the journey but that ultimately where we are heading is the ocean which represents the void the stepping into all that is that unity consciousness and you know we have to trust that we are heading to the ultimate destination but that the journey is part of the experience as well and that you know we are going to get there regardless of what happens on the way whether there are detours or unexpected situations it is about having that faith that you know we will get to where we need to go um and you know and it's that's um yeah very hope very reassuring and um, also the Eridanians are said to be supporting us to help us to dismantle false timelines and false stories which is really interesting and um, you know it, it's all about sovereignty and sort of letting go of perhaps um, stories and understandings that we have always bought into that we're now starting to question them. Now, Neptune is conjunct Shayat in the Pegasus, Pegasus constellation. So this is the winged horse, the messenger, helping us to really start to move between dimensions to go much further than we've ever been before, but also helping us to really start to grasp how multidimensional we are giving us a much bigger picture, giving us a sense of freedom that perhaps we haven't been able to connect to before. And um, I would certainly say that since Neptune moved into that 29 degree point, it has very much for me felt as if I am sort of jumping between dim dimensions and spaces and realities. It's quite... Um, quite disconcerting, quite destabilizing in many ways, but it is something that I think we're all going to have to adjust to because it is going to become more of our um, everyday reality. Um, we also have Uranus opposing Hadar in the Beta Centauri constellation. And again, you know, I've talked about this star um, many times because Uranus moves so slowly that this opposition has been active for some time. But this is just sort of bringing in this um, unity, deep unconditional love, deep compassion, deep heart centered consciousness. And I feel that the Hadarians are very much holding space for us as we move through these times of change with this opposition. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope you found that interesting. Um, it certainly is, you know, a time to really set your intention for how you want things to be in your world um, and to really start to feel the changes. You know, don't necessarily look to see 
where things might be happening, but really feel into because I think that is what we're being encouraged to do with this new moon, but also to have faith and trust and ultimately to make sure that we are fully embodied and fully grounded because that is going to really help us to shift much more quickly than perhaps, you know, if we are, um, you know, too much in our heads or um, trying to escape. It's about coming into the body and being fully present at this time. So I wish you well. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Louise at Spiral Bright Insight and I will be back again soon.